Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Spellbinders. Today I am using their embossing folder, the 2D, not the 3D club kit, as well as the clear stamps and dies kit. Um, and we're going to be talking about how to add a little bit of depth, get a different look from our embossing folders. Here I was just trying to show you the pattern, which is uh, called stylized trellis. It's like a really good, um, just kind of neutral background you could use for a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I couldn't get it to show up, so I'm just going to do it. Um, so I have the universal plate system from Spellbinders and on the base, that's what I was pointing to, it shows you the recipe you need for all the things. For 3D embossing, for 2D embossing, for embossing mats, for it just, it's got everything listed there for you. So it's super helpful. So I just ran this through, um, with a piece of, uh, charcoal colored cardstock and this is, it's super pretty by itself, but we're going to make this design kind of pop a little bit. So I'm using the portion where the lines are raised with an embossing folder. You can use the back or the front, but for this technique, we're going to use the front that shows the raised lines. And then I've just selected a slightly darker gray. Um, this is charcoal ink from Hero Arts, but you can obviously use whatever you have. Um, I would use a dye ink versus a pigment though, because the pigment's going to stay wet a really long time. And all I'm doing here is very lightly rubbing my ink pad right over top of the raised areas. And this is just going to give it so much more depth. It's going to make that pattern kind of pop forward. And it's going to give us a little a, a little more bang for our buck. It's going to give us another way to use that embossing folder, um, which you guys know I'm all about stretching my supplies. So that's it for the background. That's really all you have to do. <laughs> that's all you have to do to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the coloring. Um, I'm stamping in uh, black ink that is safe for alcohol markers because I am going to be using those and, shockingly, a more muted color palette. Um, but I'm going to get that stamped and then we'll get into the coloring. Before we get um, too far into the card, I do just want to note in case you uh, have your heart set on it, a couple of things. First of all, today is the last day for Spellbinders um, New Year New Deals sale, um, which they have like up to 40% off select products, including that universal plate system if you're interested. Um, that has basically everything you need to use whatever products you would run through an embossing. It comes with an embossing mat, it comes with an extra shim, an adapter plate. Like it just has everything that you would need in there to do anything that you would need to do with your die cutting machine. Also, it obviously it works with their Platinum 6. That's what I have. That's what I showed you guys. Um, but it, I think it also works with the regular Platinum and the Big Shot. But double check the website. Um, so anywho, um, so that's going on. And then they did some switching up of the club kits uh, for this year. So for a long time, I was doing the clear stamp and then the other option was the clear stamp and die. So they've gotten rid of just the clear stamp. So if you like the clear stamp, the option for it is the clear stamp with the die. And my guess would be just because... Um, if people were buying the stamp, then they wanted the die with it. And it's, since it's such a good deal, like such a, such a good price point, um, they probably weren't selling very many of the clear stamps, would be my guess. Like, do clear stamps on their own. Um, and then they've also added a 3D embossing folder kit. They still have, like, the glimmer kit um, that they've had before if you are a person who does the hot foiling. Um, so just a lot of really fun kits. And they've also added a stitching kit, um, which those are super fun. I just, uh, I like them, but I can't... I just can't use them that often. I just cannot because <laughs> I cross stitch and do other things. And so I get my stitching in other places when I feel like I want to do that. But I think that the cards done with the stitching are beautiful. So I think that's all the housekeeping things. Let's go back to the coloring. This muted color palette. Um, I just felt like it would look nice with the gray. I'm going to be honest. I'm normally a bright color palette person. Um, and that is usually then my accent color would be black, but since I had already kind of 
like decided that I was going to use this gray. I thought a muted color palette would be pretty nice. Um, and so when you're selecting, if you're using Copic markers to select colors that are a bit more desaturated, you want to look at that first number. So the first number is how um, much gray is in there. So if it's a zero, it's like pure pigment, which is oftentimes what you guys see me using. And then the higher it goes up on the scale, so like this, I'm using the two family, um, the more desaturated they're going to be, which means they're just going to have more gray in them. And then the last number is the darkness. So like this is a... Um, B, what is it, a B25. So even though it's the last combination, like combination in this Copic combination, um, it's it's only a five, so it's not super dark. Um, or I'm sorry, it's my mid-tone. This one is a V28, so it's going to be pretty dark, um, but you're going to see later on, and it's a good lesson in the darks with, that I always tease you guys about putting dark colors in there, um, about how like really just putting in a pop of dark color will give you a lot more dimension. So we're just going to go through here. You're going to see a lot of different color combinations than what I normally use, but I think they're all super pretty. Um, I maybe have some regrets on the yellow, but not so much the yellow combination, probably the flowers I collected. I chose to color with the yellow. So for story time today, I just want to preface this with, um, I realize this is a first world problem. Um, so I'm, I'm going to tell you because I'm a little bit making fun of myself. So have you ever seen those like memes or reels or whatever where people talk about like how one minor inconvenience completely makes them break down? This is me to a T. Like if I am inconvenienced, I am instantly enraged. Do I know why I operate this way? No, I do not. Um, that's I, that's just the way my brain is. I have no idea. I wish I could be a person who was always like super chill and go with the flow. But sometimes there'll be something that is just a small little thing. And I'm like, what is happening? Uh, I have another funny story about that. But this one is about my coffee maker. So first world problem. Let's be clear here. I have a Keurig. I have a Keurig Duo. It's something that my husband and I spent a little bit of money on when we got together because we both drink coffee. And so the one that I had previously was just a K-cup maker because I was the only coffee drinker in my household. Um, and then when that one died, we splurged and got the one that has the K-cup and the pot. Because when I'm home by myself, I use the K-cups. And when we're home together, we do the pot. Um, we're just big coffee drinkers. Which means I start, we've talked about this. Okay, so I start my day with a cup of tea in my special Ziggy mugs. I've discussed with you my Ziggy mugs. I only have two of them. I left one of them at my parents' house when I moved out so that when I go back there, I have a mug to make tea in. It was like the least good of the Ziggy mugs, the one I left there. The two really good ones, the stoneware ones, I took with me. I have two of them. These Ziggy mugs never go into the dishwasher at the same time. I always have a Ziggy mug available to make my tea. This is just, I need hot beverages to get me through my daily shenanigans, okay? So, in today, in the middle of this, so I make my card, I go downstairs, I make a cup of coffee, um... And then I'm doing, I let the dogs out because, you know, it's been crazy mud monster season. And so I let them out and I let them run around for a little bit and I get them in and I'm making, you know, drying off their paws and all that stuff. And then I go over and there's no coffee in my cup. There's no coffee in my cup. There's coffee grounds in my cup. Like dirty coffee water is in my cup. And I'm like, what's happening here? And then I look at the Keurig and it says D scale. If you don't have a Keurig, when you, there's things that like build up in the machine, like calcium and things like that. And they're not toxic and they won't hurt you, but they do need to be cleaned out for your, um, your machine to run the most efficient, but it takes forever. And they sell like the solution, but I'm cheap and I'm not buying the solution. I just do it with vinegar. Um, so now instead of making my coffee, being able to come up here, edit my video, and do my voiceover, now I am trapped by my Keurig. And because I need a hot beverage to carry on 
I mean, just to survive. I need the beverage to survive a warm beverage. So I'm like, right now I have to, I, my Ziggy mug is already in the dishwasher. I'm going to have to, to dirty my second Ziggy mug. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. So I'm already like put out by it. But then I got to figure out how to descale this thing because I have never had to do it before. We haven't had it for that long. So I'm looking up on the internet. I go to Keurig's website and then they're like, do this. And I was like, oh, that's not the one I have. So then I go scroll down to the next one. Nope, that's not the one I have. And so finally I find the one I have and it says, this is the instructions for the descaling to descale the Keurig, like the K cup side of it. You put in the water with equal parts of vinegar. So now the vinegar is just wafting through my kitchen, choking me out. Um, and then you run it through three times. Okay, that's not a big deal. 12 ounces, three times, K cups really fast. Then in order to descale the pot, I have to run that through three times with the whole pot with 12 cups. Eight ounces is one cup. What's eight times 12? Somebody do that math. It's not going to be me. A lot of cups, many cups that I have to now wait for this in order to get my coffee. So now what, what is a girl to do? I, now I'm stuck cleaning because I can't go do my things without my coffee. So I make myself a cup of tea and then I run them through. I run the, the pots through while I'm like wiping down the table and sweeping up the dirt from the dogs and all of that stuff. It's just totally backing up my day. And then it says, <laughs> these are the instructions, rinse and rest. This is the, for the, for the coffee maker, rinse and rest. And I was like, I don't have time for it to rest. What does it need to rest for? What, how is resting helping my descaling? I'm not resting it. I'm over it. So I run it through and then I wash out. I had just been using like a glass, like a two cup measuring cup to fill up um, the K cup side of it. So I wash that. I wash my basin. I wash Eric's coffee, um, like the pot portion. And in order to do that, I'm not sure if you realize, um, like you, you can scrub it obviously with soap and water, but it doesn't work that good because it's all stained. What you have to do is you have to put ice cubes in it and then you put like salt or sugar or something that will act as an exfoliant. And then you just shake the daylights out of it. You just, you swoosh that thing around till it scrapes off all the yicky stuff. Um, and so that's what I do. There's ice cubes falling all over the place because they're not falling into the pot. Emma's snacking them up off the ground as the ice cubes go skating across my kitchen floor. Um, I'm shaking this thing for, uh, like, I'm shaking it like my mama g g made me. And uh, my bicep is getting sore trying to get all the stains out of this. And I grew up in a household where my coffee pot didn't get washed. Okay. Do you remember back in the day when I told you Eric had a coffee pot that he hadn't cleaned since college and it was well seasoned, like an iron skillet, like it had just never been washed. So that's my father. And to be clear, my mother would wash the coffee pot if he didn't yell at her every time she did it. Let's go back to the card. So here, most of the coloring is done at this point and I am going back in. This is a BB29. It is a much darker purple. It's still pretty desaturated, but you can see I'm not adding this to any of the petals. I am coloring in the sections in between the petals and it's giving us is giving us life. It's giving us so much more dimension. So if you are a person who is scared of dark colors, Mary, I'm talking to you. Yes, I am. I know you're watching this and I know you're frightened and I'm telling you I'm talking to you. Like just try a little bit, a little bit. It goes so long, it's such a long way and it gives you so much more dimension. Um, and then I added some white um, accents into the center of the flowers and then a couple of little pieces, parts like to the berries and, and all that stuff. Um, I did that as well. So anyway, my bicep is getting tired from shaking this thing out because my household, we didn't clean them. My mother would have cleaned it. He yells when you clean the coffee pot. I don't know why my dad thinks the coffee tastes better if the coffee pot isn't clean and it's well seasoned, uh, but that is, that's his take on it and nobody can talk him out of it. So I'm like completely inconvenienced by my convenience machine of making my coffee because I will tell you that when we had Eric's old coffee pot that hadn't been washed since, you know, 2000, uh, it never stopped working when I needed it to work to tell me to descale it. It never did. So I was mad at my Keurig today and that is my story time.
that's what I'm bringing you today. Uh, again, I realize it is a first world problem, but it totally threw off, like it took me like an hour to do all of those things and it threw off my whole, I had a, like a game plan and then the game plan was shoot, gone, just gone, goodbye. But fortunately, I still had enough time to get this done uh, before I had to go pick up Miss Caitlin, uh, but I'm going to be cutting it close. So instead of being able to have it done and uploaded and linked and all that jazz, like some of that stuff's going to have to wait. So for the sentiment, I chose the same. This is the actually the granite cardstock. I think I said charcoal earlier. Did I? I ended up using the charcoal. Um, but so this is the granite cardstock. I... Um, heat embossed in white and it just wasn't dark enough. You guys know I'm not a person with a lot of like I don't do a lot of layers or a lot of um, matting um, of my images but sometimes a card just needs it. So the background was a bit too busy for me to just put the flowers on there. Not that it's not pretty but for my style it just it needed a landing place. So what I did was I cut a piece of white cardstock my A2 size card is uh, five and a half by four and a quarter. So I cut a white piece of cardstock that was um, three and a quarter by four and a half. And then that still didn't do it for me. So then I matted it in the charcoal color. And so ultimately that centerpiece ended up being um, three and a half by four and three quarters. And then I was happy with that. I also redid the sentiment because it was just too light onto that charcoal cardstock. I still heat embossed it. And you could definitely save the other one for another card. But um, I didn't. I just stacked it so that it would have some dimension. Speaking of dimension, I'm going to pop this little middle guy up here with um, this is foam tape, the extra wide foam tape from Picket Fence which is really great for little pieces like this because it's totally solid and so it's not going to get like crushed in the mail if I mailed things, which I don't. So it's not really a concern for me, but it may be a concern for you and I'm here to help for that concern for you. So here I have applied that. This stuff is super sticky though, like so very sticky. So once I peel off the thing using a tip that you guys gave me, because you're the cat's pajamas, um, I put some liquid adhesive on the back of it, which just buys me a little bit more time, a little bit more wiggle room when getting it onto my background, um, which I did uh, just, I adhered it just centered down. I did toy around with possibly trimming down my background and then putting it on a white card base, um, which would then been additional matting, but ultimately I felt like it was okay. I'm just going to glue down my um, die cut flowers right over top of this. I'm not going to pop it up or anything. It's already got that foam underneath the base, um, so I didn't really feel like it needed anything else. And then I'm going to glue my two little die cuts together and I will adhere them um, to the bottom right hand portion just to fill in that space a little bit. Uh, and then some gems and then it'll be done. So yeah, so my my Keurig, um, it foiled my plans today a little bit. And then like when it was done, I, by the way, I did not let it rest. Like just to be clear about the choices that I made, I did not let it rest. I rinsed it and then I made a cup of coffee. My cup of coffee that I am currently, that I have, it's halfway gone now, let's be real, um, is it does not taste any better. It did not come out any faster it did not come out with any less noise. It did not improve my coffee whatsoever. The hour that I spent descaling my machine. But I suppose it kept the coffee grounds out of it, which I guess was a problem I was having that I didn't know I was having for the first three cups that I made today. And this fourth cup just couldn't just couldn't take it anymore. I feel like with all of today's technology, there could be a, you know, descale in three cups. So you could prepare, but that's just me. Nonetheless, this card is complete. This is the whole thing. I hope you guys learned a little something or inspired to get a little bit more out of the embossing folders that you have. Um, or ones that you may pick up in the future. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will link everything below and I will catch you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.